What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. This past week was very eventful as we got the release of iOS 16.1.1 and iOS 16.2 Beta 2 along with an update to the AirPods. So in this episode, we're gonna take a look at some additional features and changes in 16.1.1 and 16.2 along with an update on the performance and battery life. And then after covering the software, we're going to discuss the major change coming to Siri, why you'll want to buy an iPhone 14 Pro as soon as possible, Apple's struggle with balancing design and costs, and more. And as always, if you want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. So let's start with some additional features in iOS 16.2 Beta 2. And the first thing is that the Dynamic Island now keeps the signal bars visible while playing music on the 14 Pro series. And this is not just for music, it's for any activity up there in the Dynamic Island. You will notice that now the signal bars are visible at the same time. Now speaking of music, we have a few changes in in music as well. So you can see if we go on to the controls down here, the play pause and the forward back, you will notice that we have a new animation. So that animation, it might look familiar and that's because that's what used to be in the control center and the lock screen, not what used to be, it still is, but that's where it originated was in the control center and on the lock screen, but now it's made its way into the actual music application on the now playing screen. Also in the music application, you can see we have a new look for the album view right here so before we had black buttons in beta 1 in previous versions of ios we had the black play and shuffle now we have kind of a color matching less opaque look on those buttons along with down here below where it talks about the album that also has a new look and if you look really close you could see that the genre and the release date are less bold now so before they were much more bold now they are less bold and they kind of blend in more if we head over to the lock screen you could see on 16.2 beta 1 and previous versions of ios 16 if you were in a focus mode and you tapped on that that is how you could turn that focus mode off or switch to a different focus mode all you had to do was tap but now in beta 2 tapping does nothing you have to tap and hold haptic press on that and then it pulls up your list of focus modes for you to turn it off or change it and something I noticed in 16.2 beta 1 but I did not cover it is inside of Safari if we tap on these two A's right there you will see if you have iCloud private relay turned on there is now a toggle to turn off hide IP address straight from Safari and you can see the little glyph icon next to it and all you have to do is simply tap on that and now it says allow website to temporarily see your IP address, tap on continue, and it will turn that off and refresh the page. There's a new Siri setting as well. So if we go to our settings and go to Siri and search and then Siri responses, there's a new option here under spoken responses that says prefer silent responses. So if you don't like having Siri say things out loud when you, you know, interact with Siri, you can turn that to prefer silent responses. And it says down here, Siri will respond silently, except when you appear to be driving or using headphones with the screen off. Now, a big new feature coming in iOS 16.2 is custom accessibility mode. And this was found in the code by 9to5Mac. And you can see from these screenshots here, you're gonna be able to change quite a bit. So you can have a preferred layout. So you could have like a grids or lists layout on your iPhone. You can change a lot of things about the UI. You can have a password to you know prevent others from changing your accessibility settings. There are so many things coming with this custom accessibility mode and I will cover them once I can actually you know access it from my phone but again this was just found in the code it's not available just yet but this is going to be massive for those that use accessibility features on the iPhone now if you look at the clock widget you will see there are a couple of changes in here that are very hard to spot if you're not looking for them so first off it looks like the font for the actual clock numbers is smaller so like the 1 through 12 that appears to be smaller however inside the CUP for the time and the minus 3 of appear to be larger than they were in beta one. And of course, Freeform is the new default application that's coming with 16.2. That's gonna be a pretty big new application for collaboration. But in 16.2 beta two, you're now able to tap on the share sheet and it will actually pull up without crashing or saying you need to sign in to iCloud. So this allows you to send an invite to other people to use Freeform with 
with you. Now, another pretty big feature coming in iOS 16.2 is the home architecture upgrade. So this will be huge for those who have HomeKit enabled devices. It's going to improve performance and reliability. Now, I talked about this before, but I just want to talk about it again because I have noticed a difference after updating. I've been using the upgraded version of the home architecture for, you know, a while now, a couple of weeks now. And I have to say, you know, the biggest thing I noticed that's been improved is the automation triggering. So automations now happen like instantly instead of having a few seconds of a delay. Now, I will also say that music playback and especially handoff are also improved, but it's not as significant as I think it will be once we roll out of the beta stages. And then a massive feature coming for those in India is 5G connectivity. So 5G will officially be enabled with iOS 16.2 for users in India. So this is going to obviously greatly improve your cell connectivity, your speeds, pretty much everything about your cell connection is going to be improved with 5G. Now, of course, the architecture there in India is probably still going to need to be built out to get on the level of like, you know, United States or somewhere else where there's a lot of 5G towers, but India is working on that. So, you know, carriers are likely still updating and, you know, potentially even waiting till 16.2 to come out to the public before even allowing users to access 5G. So just keep that in mind. 16.2 will enable 5G for those in India, but your carrier may, you know, it may take them a while to actually enable it and for you to actually see 5G working on your device. And if you are an iPhone user in Colorado, you will be pleased to know that you can now add a digital ID to your wallet application. So if you go to the plus button right there and tap on driver's license or state ID, you can see that Colorado joins Arizona and Maryland as the only states currently to enable the digital driver's license feature. Now, this will allow you to use a digital driver's license instead of your physical one at select TSA checkpoints. Now, eventually, you will be able to use this in place of your actual driver's license, but as of right now, it's only able to be used properly at TSA checkpoints. Now, moving on to iOS 16.1.1, we knew this update was coming and it did get released earlier this week, a day after 16.2 beta 2. Now, this update did not bring the long-awaited emergency SOS via satellite feature, but Apple did say, once again, they kind of reaffirmed it, that the SOS via satellite feature is coming in November. Now, one thing that I noticed in their press release, and I noted this on Twitter, is that they didn't say specifically that a software update was coming to enable this feature. So they said that previously, but now in this new updated press release, they did not say anything about a software update enabling this feature. So that leads me to believe that this emergency SOS via satellite feature is going to be pushed server side. So the code I would imagine is already in 16.1.1 and Apple is just going to flip a switch and it's going to be enabled for those on the iPhone 14 series. So keep an eye out for that. And of course, I will talk about that in a future Apple Weekly episode when it does get enabled. Now, a pretty big feature that's in iOS 16.1.1, but Apple did not mention anywhere is that AirDrop has a new setting for those in China. So now under everyone it now says everyone but only for 10 minutes so you can see I have a screenshot of this right here and the reason this was only released for those in China is because it's likely in response to the spread of anti chi posters that have been spread throughout China via airdrop but according to Mark Gurman this feature is coming worldwide next year so this will be available for us in the US Canada other countries as well later on down the road next year probably in a 16.3 or 16 point four update. Now also in 16.1.1, I mentioned the alarm bug, but apparently that is not fixed for everybody. So sometimes it will show the alarm is off, even if you have an alarm set. Like if I tap that right there, sometimes you will have an alarm set, especially for a sleep alarm, but it won't show on the lock screen. So apparently that is not fixed for everybody. It did get fixed for me, but it doesn't look like it is for everybody just yet. And then heading back into the wallet application, we still don't have any sign of the high yield savings account in the wallet application. So this is where you can make, you know, interest off of your money that's sitting in your Apple Cash account. So I'm not sure what Apple's waiting on. It's a perfect time to release that with the market down and everything, but we still don't have any sign of that savings account just yet. Now we do still have a few bugs on 16.1.1 and 16.2 beta one. I don't want to spend too long here because I talk about these every week, but I do just want to quickly mention them. We still have the bug right here where the now playing platter just gets abnormally large, even when it shouldn't be. So you can see right there as an example of that. 
I'm also still having the issue where screenshots are not saving as cropped. So if I crop something right here and then I saved it just like so, sometimes it will not save as I cropped it. And then of course we still have the lag with the HomeKit enabled devices right there. So you can see my HomeKit devices take a while to load. And then I do still have the bug where switching off a focus mode leads to a black wallpaper on the lock screen and the home screen. That is easily the most annoying one. And sometimes I don't even have to switch the focus mode. I've actually noticed now in the latest version, 16.1.1 and 16.2 beta 2, I don't even have to switch off a of focus mode anymore. Sometimes it just switches to an all black wallpaper for no reason. So somehow that bug has gotten worse. So Apple really needs to fix that. All right. So now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is most likely going to be iOS 16.2 beta 3. And this could either come next week or the following week. So it's kind of tricky because Apple does usually only wait one week after a beta two, but I can see another two week cycle and that would be a beta three on the week of the 21st, but it's too hard to say right now. So I'm just going to say it's either going to be the week of the 14th or the week of the 21st. Now, if it does get released on the week of the 14th, that means we will be on a one week release schedule all the way until the final release in December. But if it's a two week cycle, if we get it on the week of the 21st, after that, it's going to switch to a one week release schedule. And then as far as iOS 16.1.2 goes, the only reason I said that's even possible is because Apple said previously that cell connectivity or satellite connectivity via SOS was coming in November and they said it was going to be via a software release and the only software release you know that's coming in November that we know of would have to be a 16.1.2 because iOS 16.2 final we heard from Mark German is coming sometime in December so that would lead only another software release to come in November and that would have to be 16.1.2 but as I mentioned earlier Apple didn't say that's going to be alongside a software update anymore in their latest press release. So that makes me think it's going to be pushed server side. And that would mean that there's not going to be a 16.1.2. So I think the chances of a 16.1.2 are very unlikely now due to that. I think that 16.2 is going to be the next public release sometime in December, of course, unless Apple finds something significant that they need to push out an emergency update for. And then as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we did also see a new firmware update for all of the AirPods that are currently sold by Apple. So the AirPods 2 and 3, the AirPods Pro 1 and 2, and the AirPods Max all got a new firmware update. I did make a full video on that. If you missed it, it will be linked up in the cards and down in the description below. But this update does fix quite a few bugs, especially for the AirPods Pro 2. Like for example, the audio drift bug, which was easily the most complained about issue with the AirPods Pro 2, that does appear to be resolved with the new firmware update, among other fixes. And again, check out that video if you want to see it. And if you want to know how to update your AirPods, that's in that video as well. But just know there was an update for all of the AirPods. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. And let's start with everyone's favorite voice assistant, Siri. So it looks like Apple is looking to follow in Amazon's footsteps by dropping the Hey from Hey Siri. So next year is apparently when that's going to happen, according to Mark Gurman. So he said this in his latest report. The company is working on an initiative to drop the hey and the trigger phrase so that a user only needs to say Siri along with a command. While that might seem like a small change, making the switch is a technical challenge that requires a significant amount of AI training and underlying engineering work. The complexity involves Siri being able to understand the singular phrase Siri in multiple different accents and dialects. Having two words, hey, S, increases the likelihood of the system properly picking up the signal. So he does also mention that Siri will soon integrate deeper into third-party apps and services. So that's super exciting to hear because I'll take any improvement at this point, you know, over the lackluster version of current Siri. So I can't wait to see what Apple does with that next year. Now on to some bad news. So Apple just this past week published something that they rarely ever publish, and that is a press release about iPhone supply. Titled Update on Supply of iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, Apple says that COVID restrictions have temporarily impacted the primary iPhone 14 Pro assembly facility in China, and that customers will experience longer wait times to receive their new products. So if you are wanting to get a new iPhone iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max for yourself or just as a gift, you might want to order that 
ASAP, like today, since many people are going to wait until December. And if you order it in December, you're probably going to be waiting until January to get it. You're not going to get it in time for Christmas is basically what Apple is saying here. But it gets worse because AirPods Pro 2 might be in the exact same boat. So according to Ming-Chi Kuo, Apple has suspended AirPods Pro 2 assembly at a major supplier. So he said this, Apple's key supplier, GoerTech, officially announced that the company recently received a notice from a major overseas client to suspend the assembly production for a smart acoustic product. This product may be the Apple AirPods Pro 2, and it says that Gore-Tex suspension of production is more likely due to production issues rather than demand issues. And he mentions that there will be a new supplier filling in, but there still might be some delays. So I'll say it again, if you're looking to buy Apple products or honestly any tech product as a gift for this holiday season, order it now just so you don't have to risk getting it in January or February instead. And then next, let's talk about how in a perfect world, we could have the best design at the cheapest price, not just for Apple, but for anything, but that's just not how it works. And that is an impossible balancing act that Apple is currently still trying to figure out. So Johnny Ive, of course, infamously left Apple in 2019. And since then, Evan Tenke has been in charge of product design, but now she's leaving as well. And that puts Apple in a tough spot to to find somebody of a similar caliber. But in this recent report from Bloomberg, we hear that even before Johnny Ive left, Apple's operations department has had more influence over the design team than in the past. And unfortunately, that has led to new difficulties that result in an increased focus on costs rather than purely on look and features. The report says this, in some ways, the department has been in flux since the death of Steve Jobs more than a decade ago. The Apple co-founder had forged a partnership with Ive that helped establish the clean, simple aesthetic that remains the tech giant's hallmark today, but an increased emphasis on costs, along with other distractions, created new difficulties. So it sounds like the product department at Apple just is not as happy or they don't feel as free as they once were. So it'll be interesting to see how this affects Apple over the next several years. And then finally, what do you think of a folding iPhone? Would you want one? Well, a Chinese YouTuber just recently constructed a foldable iPhone built on the foldable chassis of a Motorola Razr. And here's what that looks like. So it looks pretty wild. And in my opinion, it looks kind of ugly but it's still kind of cool for some reason to me. So, you know, this might look similar to that. You know, I think Apple's going to have a much better design, but it does kind of give you a look as to what it could potentially look like. And we do know based on rumors that Apple is currently testing prototype foldable iPhones. But, you know, I'm still wondering how many of you guys will actually want a foldable iPhone because I personally don't think I ever will. I don't know. Maybe that's a stretch, but I've used foldable Android phones like the Z Flip and I'm honestly just not a huge fan of them, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. So there you have it. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some updates on the latest iOS 16 changes. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more Apple Weekly episodes just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon soon.